All right, welcome back. Time to bring in our panel right now with us here in studio today. We have former state party chair for the Indiana Democrats, Robin Winston, and for the Republicans, former state rep Mike Murphy, along with the professors, Purdue, Purdue political science professor Martin Sweet, UND political science professor Laura Wilson. So Laura, I'll start with you here. Coming out of the DNC, Democrats certainly feel enthused. That enthusiasm seems to have built ever since Vice President Harris became the party's nominee. Does she get another bump coming out of this convention in terms of the polling? I expect we'll see it. 538 reported a poll on Friday that showed her within the lead by 4%, but still within margin of error. Um, she really seemed to nail her speech Thursday night at the debate, at the convention rather, and she did a really good job of explaining who she is, how she would lead as commander in chief, really in what you would see in a Harris Walls campaign. Um, I personally was disappointed in Taylor Swift and Beyonce and weren't there. Everybody thought Beyonce right? was going to be there. <laughs> but right? there was but a, no. a lot of excitement yeah. for the Democratic Party, and you have to be honest, you just didn't see that when Biden was the candidate. So having that swap, I think, definitely helps her. We'll probably see the boost pretty soon in terms of polls. So, Martin, how long can the Harris campaign keep this momentum going? Well, traditionally, Labor Day is the time which we start thinking that these modern campaigns really begin, that people really start to pay attention. Next weekend. That's next week. So yep. it's coming up. Uh, she's They've lined things up really, really well for themselves, especially if you compare things to a month ago where the Democratic Party was. Um, it was a great convention for them. Um, and we'll see how things really shake out. But remember, news cycles now are so much more uh, uh, sped up in a way sure. that um, I'm not entirely sure the momentum will really carry. Robin, you were there in Chicago. There were some protesters. There was that unfortunate incident with the breakfast event that was tampered with. But largely, this was a convention uh, that seems to have hit the mark for Democrats, as Martin and Laura suggested. What were your big takeaways uh, from being on the ground there in Chicago this past week? We had presidents at our convention. The other guys didn't have any come to theirs. We had presidents at our convention. I mean, you led with Joe Biden, you had Bill Clinton, I mean, you had Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and then hopefully the next president of the United States with, with uh, Vice President Harris. But the enthusiasm was there. If we'd have done the noise meter that you see in sports, it would have been off the hook for Joe Biden. It was very loud for him. It was very, very loud for, for the vice president. People left there with enthusiasm, and it was good to see people's faces turned up at the end of uh, end of four days being in Chicago. So, Mike, where where do Republicans go from here, and also what impact uh, might we see from Friday's news here that RFK is now dropping out of this race for president? Uh, he's still going to be on the ballot here in Indiana and some other states, but does his decision change this race in any way coming out of the DNC? What is the state of this race right now? Um, I don't think. RFK Jr. matters a whit. Everybody knows him for the nut job he is, and over the last several days, he's made that even more more clear. And so he announces today, and make a little bit of news tonight. Okay, okay uh, you know Harris will grab some of his votes. Trump will some, grab some of his votes. It may end up, you know, even Stephen. Some who people knows? might not vote. Who some people might not RFK. vote because they yeah. they just love nut jobs. But I think overall, I think you're still going to have, as, as uh, Martin said, a very close race. She's going to be up, you know, six, eight points at some point. But, you know, Donald Trump's a fighter. He's not going to let that, you know, stay for very long. And, the, you know, the mud will start slinging. It already has started slinging. Sure. And uh, it'll end up with a, you know, two or three point race. Uh, Laura, what do you make of RFK Jr.'s decision? What kind of impact it might have? And, and was he really pulling more from Trump than, than Harris at this point? How does the electorate in those key swing states uh, respond to this news? That's sure. well, the key. I agree with Mike. I think the impact is very negligible. And quite frankly, he was a flawed candidate to begin with, but it's just really hard in our system as a third party candidate to gain momentum to really mount any kind of serious challenge. I, I do think he was probably going to give more to the Republicans than Democrats, so that endorsement of Trump on Friday made sense. I just don't see that particular instinct you know, as, a, as an issue, making a big difference, him as a candidate no longer being on the ballot. We've seen that with third party candidates before who were in double digits and All then the time, their, right? their numbers get smaller and smaller. Martin, of course, uh, we go from the conventions to the debates, which really get going here uh, next month, September 10th. How important will that be for voters to see both Vice President Harris and former President Trump on stage together at the same time? Right. Well, that, I mean, that's where I think Trump's going to try to make his hay, right? Um, he has certainly had his moments in 16 uh, with Hillary. In 20, he was a little bit more muted with Biden. And so you wonder whether someone like a Susie Wiles can sort of contain the force that is Donald Trump, uh, uh, impose some discipline on him in that debate. Because the way in which we perceive debates has a lot to do with uh, the pe people uh, who are in that debate, right? And so the same charges levied at uh, Joe Biden may ring a little bit different when they come directly 
directly after Kamala Harris. Let's talk about that story now that continues to develop here in Indiana and specifically in Indianapolis. Uh, with more Democrats calling on their party to do more in the wake of these allegations involving Mayor Hogsett's former chief of staff, State Senator Hunley calling on the state party to do more about this this past week. Robin, you once served as state party chair. Should party leaders be doing more? Well, they already are unionized. Keep that in mind. They have a code of conduct. But of course, anything you can to quell issues that make people uncomfortable in the workplace, you should be doing. So I'm glad to see they're going to do that. On the investigation side, if they go through with it, then we'll finally get this out in public discourse. Everybody will know what's going on. I think transparency, particularly in this environment, wins out. The council meeting this past Friday to talk about where this investigation goes from here. Mike, how do you see this from across the I aisle? think it's a matter of can Joe Hogsett survive this. I mean, he has Democrat after Democrat after Democrat lining up against him. Women are coming forward. They say more women are coming forward. And I was just talking to some reporters yesterday. There's some deeper, deeper questions on the way. This is, this is just beginning. And Laura, certainly this is an issue that it seemed really to, to largely affect city government, but this week with a state lawmaker saying the state party needs to do more, uh, it's certainly the kind of situation that seems as if it's continuing to grow. Oh, absolutely. I think when you have a state senator coming out and saying we're not doing enough, we need to do better, that just makes it so evident that it's not just talking about two people, you know, one particular issue. Right? It's, it's very clearly something we need to address. And I think not just what happened, but what could happen in the future, making it very clear we don't accept these. This is completely unacceptable. It's unprofessional. It shouldn't happen again. All right, we'll see where things go from here. Our thanks to the panel. They'll be back with this week's winners and losers coming up. But next, part of my conversation with best-selling author John Green on a topic that you might not expect. Stick around. We're back after this.